Pues, I can't complain. How about yours? Tampa, that's where you're from? Oh, okay. I didn't know that.
He gave me a position. Yeah, why not? You just got to call it a service animal in here. It's the same place, but it's a uh, committee. There you go. <laughs> Happy New Year. Is anybody uh, phone to get in today? <laughs> okay. Okay. Happy New Year. Pretty good. How you doing? Nice to own When I got out of law school, I bought a condo for this game. Good. I got little kids, so partying days are uh, temporarily over. <laughs> They go back to school next week. That's right. Yeah, my wife can't wait. <laughs> and it was close to the school, and that's how we had it. And then they had the good stuff there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I slept through the actual New Year when I woke up. This, it was like a war zone. All the streets were full of smoke, and like, must have been a lot of fireworks. And I guess there was no wind, so. I know the guys, I mean, the people in my neighborhood. The thing about Berlin, that's why you know, we moved. That's it. Was it from middle school? The idea at the time, Cushman didn't have a high school. I will tell you that. One, two, in fact, it was during the elementary school years that they, the middle school came over. On the street over. So, um, the so when he was in fifth grade, we wanted to put him someplace we could stay from six to twelve. So we thought for Berlin, yeah. which was great because I used to have a little bit of a little I had one like that behind me. He goes walking up and in the air. The house is shaking. Yeah, yeah. Well, which yeah. Of three of them do that. But then, at midnight, I was like, my God, it just, what is this? It was this? hard. Yeah. And so we have friends you know, who went with uh, his best friend, actually. I'm Harry, that my one, my one dog is dead. And we thought, you know what? And so he's not. So we did pay him. He loved it. He loved really it. Really? Yeah. Well, in the, in the days. We used to have mild fireworks. Yeah. yeah. He loved He'd be it. like this. Like, if you were alive yeah. in it, that would have killed him. Easy yeah, I, I had one like that too. A big Doberman too. Yeah. And she heard the noise. She'd crawl, she, a couch with this much space underneath. She'd <laughs> she try, try to find her way underneath. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, this is actually like, I, was, I was actually chairman this of the board. This is also the killer in the air. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty good school. Oh, um, but, you know, I grew up, I was on a school. Here comes 23. I remember the days yeah, when, in 2020, some I just kind of felt no, like... Oh, so. And I knew people, you know, I just got, I, I, that's so right futuristic. Right. Well, all the futuristic movies I grew up with as a kid, we, they're pretty much took place in the past now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. The year 2000, I was like, what was going to happen? I remember. Mm -hmm. Because I was, um, I was working in North Carolina Beach at the time. So you were in Fisher Island Elementary School? Remember, when 2000 came, <laughs> Now the oh yeah, everybody is thought the best of the work, well, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Really gonna go so to we actually called in like a island. state of emergency for all public works people. And wow. we were stationed there oh from about 6 See, in, the, in the, the evening island, I probably until would not have put in the after midnight. Because
Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I know, it feels like the same year, but you're so refreshed. <laughs> 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 Local, then, uh, Isabella, we should probably um, go ahead and get started. Okay. <laughs> I'd use it at least once. Yeah. So, why don't we call the uh, call the meeting to order? This is the uh, Charter Review Committee meeting uh, for Thursday, January 5, 2023. And Isabella, if you would call the uh, roll call for us. Mr. Valinsky? Here. Ms. Steelman? Here. Mr. LaCapra? Here. Mr. Bell? Here. Vice Chair O'Hara is absent. Mr. Griffith will be with us via Zoom shortly. Mr. Quinton? Here. You have quorum. Thank you. And in, in looking at the, um, the next item, approval of minutes, um, the agenda that I got said we're to approve the December 12 minutes, excuse me, December 5 minutes. I think we'd already done that at the December 12th meeting. I think it's the December 12th meeting minutes we're missing. Well, back. Because I, so I actually had, when I was going through my materials from previous, mm -hmm. I actually had a copy of the December it's, 5 minutes. Okay. So seeing I already had a copy, I, you know, I thought we had already handled that on December 12th. I thought it was the December 12 minutes that we, you we didn't correct. have last, last week. I think you're right. Or not last week, the 19th, we didn't have The it. 19th, okay, you're correct. I'll issue that once I uh, return back to my office tomorrow. All right, so, so the um, December 12 minutes and the December 19 minutes. I guess we haven't gotten either of those at this point. So, yes, do you have a comment? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was just wondering, since we have a presentation and we haven't really received any documentation or none was posted, uh, if maybe we wanted to do the presentation before public comments, uh, because I feel people might even be making comments that might be preempted by the presentation, maybe they'll inform their comments a little more, um, just throwing it out there. I don't have a problem with that. So we're on our agenda. We've got, why don't we, so we've got, first we're going to have the discussion regarding the qualifications and growth management with that presentation. And then the next item is the charter resolution. Um, any, any other committee member have a thought or comment regarding moving public comments after the planning and zoning director presentation? I'm fine with that, just if there's somebody who is here for public comments and doesn't want to stay for that, if we could give them the option of just sit, staying, you know, speaking now. Why don't we do this? Why don't we go ahead and stick to our current agenda, have the public comments now, you know, then if you're, if you're interested, and I anticipate you are interested in hearing the presentation by the planning and zoning director, you know, you can sit through that with us. And then we have another meeting on Monday, the 19th. So to the extent you have public comment um, on that, you can present that on the 19th, um, the 19th or you're free to speak with us outside. As far as I, as far as I understand, you can speak with us. You have the, the 9th, the 9th, not the 19th. The 9th, the 9th, correct. Yes, this, this Monday, thank you for that important correction. So our meeting, yeah, our next meeting is on the 9th, which is uh, this Monday. 
So why don't we go ahead with public comments, if anybody has any public comments. Um, Patricia Gispert, 246 Northeast 100th Street. Um, I wasn't at the last meeting, so and plus I, I don't know what was discussed. So I'm sorry if I'm going to go over something you've already done. Um, under qualifications, and I, I notice, I guess the what's here on the charter is the old one, which still um, reads six months for um, living in the shores in order to qualify to run. And I recall that uh, the meeting I attended, you had all kind of agreed on one year, and I'm just hoping that that is staying and you're not going back to six months. So that was one thing. Um, the next thing, um, I know a lot of us were at that meeting where they chose the you know replacement council person or watched like I did at home, and it was excruciatingly confusing. Um, so I'm wondering if you have, you know, looked into that and having some kind of clearly delineated process for filling vacate vacancies not um what happened at that last meeting where it was you know this is what we did once and we're going to do this and now we're going to do rank and then we're going to do you know like votes with um giving everybody you know numbers or whatever but um anyway that's what i would hope that perhaps we could put something in there that clearly delineates the process so there's no you know, wondering how it's going to be done. Um, and lastly, on the growth management, I guess the presentation by planning and zoning, there's some wording um, from the other minutes that said neighborhood protection language, making sure that we have neighborhood protection language. Um, I live right behind this building over here, the Shoreview building, 9999. They've just put in some brand new parking lot lighting. And why do I know that? It, lights up my backyard, it lights up my neighbor's backyard, it lights up my neighbors through their front window. And, you know, so nothing's been done yet. So um, it's just neighborhood protection, you know, it, it's, I live near, I live in downtown. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Maria McGinnis, 1250 Northeast 101st Street. I don't have anything prepared to state tonight, but I do want to just reiterate what I had requested a couple of meetings back. Um, I still think there needs to be something in the charter with the qualifications or whatever that one council person should not be able to dominate the, the public square on social media. And if that is allowed under the Sunshine Law, that something be done, that there's some mechanism to check the veracity of what's being stated to keep a record of what's being stated so it's not deleted when it's put, it up, put up, um, that there be some sort of decorum towards residents when a official is using that vehicle to communicate with residents and others. Um, I just think that's a really critical thing that needs to be addressed. Um, Sunshine Law has not come up to speed, but there is clearly a gaping hole for one person to be able to dominate the social square to the exclusion of any other council member for stating any other opinion because if they did they would be per se in violation of the sunshine law so i think if the charter is someplace where that can be managed i think it should be um so and i know it goes into like the qualifications and things like that but i would love to see that i don't know what this presentation will be um, and i look forward to it um, regarding growth management and if there's anything that can limit um, the ability of uh, council to do the things that are happening now, which are dramatic, without public input, I think that also should be addressed. So I just generically put that out there, and I thank you for your service and your consideration. Anybody else? All right, so with that, we'll uh, close public comments, and... Uh, move move forward uh, with our agenda appreciate those comments um i will just say this that uh i do believe that we did vote on the number of years of time of residency and correct me if i'm wrong we voted that it should be two years two-year resident as a qualification to run for council so uh, we should be seeing that in in our finished product 
Um, we did talk a little bit about the social media dominance issue at the end of last meeting. And I believe council was going to not, it's not on our agenda to discuss, but there was some, some template I believe that you were aware of that you were gonna provide to us just so we had that information. It was not is designated as a discussion item. Right, so we'll, we're in the process of reviewing the actual villages social media um, policy. And we think that'll be more beneficial to review that in accordance with the new draft or whatnot. So we'll have that prepared for you next meeting. Um, but <clears throat> we'll discuss a little later in regards to additional research that we become aware of in regards to the two year um, residency requirement, but that's later on on the agenda. But I just wanted to just make you aware of that, that what the, what's provided in the backup, it's what's current. And because currently in your charter, you do not have that two year provision, what we can provide is only what's current. So the proposed is a different story. And so I just want to clarify, everything is still as it, as it stands of what you have already presented, but we still can only work with what we have, which is the materials we provided. So just wanted to make sure that was clear for the record. So I'm, uh, I'm not clear on the, on the two year thing. What I know, I think, um, we had we discussed that at the last meeting. I think Jesse had some issues. We, we then were concerned about fine tuning the language after we agreed to two years. And I think it was brought up to, you know, actually I think there was some some language from other charters that kind of handled that. The, the concern would be if you lived here for two years and left for ten years. Right. So we we, we changed that language okay. and we put it to continuously have resided in two years. But what I'm um, particularly um, saying is that later on in the agenda, when we get to the draft resolution, I'm going to provide you additional information that you can now discuss and consider regarding the two year requirement that you have um, previously voted on. And so based on the new information, you can decide to keep it as is, or someone on the prevailing party, since you did vote on it, can have, um, can do a motion to reconsider. You can change that two year requ requirement that you have already recommended to present. And so based on the new information that we provide tonight, you may choose to change your vote is what I'm saying. Okay. But I just wanted to make sure that was clear that we still have, although some things have been voted upon, it's still a process. And that's why at the next meeting, you'll have the, there won't say draft, it will be the final version that you'll be recommending. And okay. so this is just a preliminary, like, okay. you know, document, but you'll have from now, at least until the next meeting to start looking at it and getting familiar. And then we'll make further changes based on tonight. Okay, thank you. So once we move into the uh, qualifications section of the agenda. Sure, and, and particularly, um, we didn't provide a presentation for this. This is strictly just the materials, which is honestly the materials you have already been exposed to in the past in terms of all the charters and samples we provided. The instruction that we provided from the last meeting based off of reviewing the two year um, requirement um, I believe Ms. Stillman wanted to um, have further discussion on qualifications in general. And so what we gathered were some of the qualifiers that um, some municipalities have, but most of them have disqualifiers. And so you have the two options. At we There was no particular direction in terms of you wanted to talk about a particular item, but um, I will defer to the chair and even to um, um, Ms. Stillman in terms of the particular issues at hand that you all want to f discuss further and we'll go from there to make any changes to the charter. Uh, in regard to qualifications issue, does any um, committee member have any comments or, or input on, I guess the input as between what we have currently, which we will address to change the six years, six months, six months. to two years. Um, beyond that, and then the, the candidate qualifying procedures. Is there anything else that uh, any other issue or language? I know council said that you know there are in other charters 
some disqualification provisions. We've got qualification provisions. Um, any comments or thoughts on doing anything addition, additional to this section? Would it be appropriate to say the two years or the two years before the election? So, for example, if you wanted to run in April, this, you know, that you had to have lived here two years continuously before the election that you want to run in. Yes, and that's how it's con that's how it's currently drafted, and what you all have proposed is that you must continuously live in the village two years before the election is what the language. But I mean, two years before the election, and you're, you know. So you could not meet that threshold when you submit your qualifying paperwork, but as long as you get it. No, if, if for example, and I'm just using it because April's coming up, but if you want to run in April, one of the qualifiers would be that you would have to have lived in the village two years continuously prior to April. Mm -hmm. Is that appropriate, or does that make sense? Yes, I, I think that, that was, yeah, I think that's very important because. Um, uh, and if, from my understanding, that's what we currently have proposed based off your last vote. Is that right. not what we're right? We, we were yes, we were trying to address the concern that someone could have lived here for ten years, ten right. years ago, and then moved back right. a week ago. And, and that's what say, I think we address. So. But if not, if you if you're saying that we haven't, if you if we missed it, we'll we'll make the change. I guess it's not clear to me from this language, and I could be misinterpreting it. That you, as a qualification, that you had to have been here two years prior to the election that you want to qualify for. I mean, I, I don't. It says a person who has resided continuously in the village for two years who registers for a procedural, you know, but it doesn't say. I mean, maybe I'm not being clear, that in order to qualify for the election, you had to have been there two years before the election that you want to qualify for. Not just two years. No, does that make sense? But I guess, the, I, in my mind, the continuously is what requires it to be directly before that particular election. So if I'm qualifying, and it, always, it already says I have to continuously have lived in the, in the village, by default, I think we're capturing your concern, but we can further that clarification by saying continuously for two years prior to the election for which you seek to qualify, seek to qualify for. It. We can make it even clearer. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but I, yes. I don't know if I didn't necessarily get that. that Understood. So we can we can further um, clarify in that regard. And I will defer to the chair, chair, but since we're on the topic, I can give you the further information in regards to the two year, and you can discuss whether you want to keep the two year requirement. Further information in regard to what? The, the two year. Yeah, um, sure. Okay. Yeah. So, now, that was, Francine, were you, you were you were you speaking from the draft resolution? That language I think there. It's on page seven. Yes. Okay. It's more clarity on that, but you just got more information to consider. Um, well, let me not say more because we did bring, we did, um, when Mitch Beerman was here at the meeting, he um, inferred that there was case law that um, was not favorable for a two year residency requirement. And so we wanted to just make sure that we reiterate that this evening, that although there has, there's no case law that we found at the moment currently, that would prohibit a municipality from implementing a two-year requirement. There is case law that is available in regards to a county implementing a two-year requirement. The facts are not directly on point, but nonetheless, um, as your legal counsel, we wanna make sure that you're aware if you do choose that right route to go to a two-year requirement, there may be some challenges or, you know, there's, let me not say that, there's always gonna be challenges, but, this is what's available at the moment in the realm of case law and so just want to make sure that you're aware of that and if that may sway your decision to keep the two year or take it to one year or you know whatever you may see fit but at least we know two year has been challenged from a county level um what was the this, this briefly what was the argument why somehow two years was and unlawful do you want to expand well i'm sorry was it miami Dade county um, 
So in terms of um, the argument that was used, um, so the standard that they um, that the case utilized is strict scrutiny. So it's a higher standard, and it looks at whether or not that um, there was a rational basis as well for making that decision. Um, the following up to that case, there was an attorney general um, opinion where I believe it was. Hollandell Beach that wanted to change their residency requirement to three years. So they did that, you know, comparison between the county and a city. And what the attorney general um, stated was there hasn't been a case where a city of a small size or that community um, where a two year or three year was looked upon disfavorably. However, what they looked at is the community as a whole. So the factors are case by case basis the access that this particular community has when it comes to their own election. So with Sarasota, they looked at the difficulty that someone might have when it comes to getting to know their community and this reasoning behind why the board chose to have that two years. So when it comes to a case, it's hard to say it's, it's fact sensitive right. and um, they'll look at the reason for why this board chose the two years and whether or not it was reasonable and if it was rational. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. So uh, Sarasota was allowed to keep the two year or they were, no. they were so not? We're saying they were not. And that's why we wanted to make sure that you're aware. I know Mitch Beerman mentioned it in the discussion, but now that we are here at the two year, just wanted to make sure that you're aware it was a challenge based on that. It was not allowed. It was a county. There are some differentiations in terms of the facts here, but nonetheless, it's your recommendation that you're making to the council, and we're going to advise the council of the same thing. Regard, you know, whether you choose, if you choose two years, we'll inform the council of the same, right? So, so that's where we're really at at this point. So, has there been an opinion on where the line is, like where, how much, like, can a county just not have? Uh, a requirement for residency? A residency requirement? That particular in other words, they've said no to two years, but are they saying one year is okay? One year. Or is it just that nobody has challenged one year? It's, well, no, I wouldn't say that it's nobody has challenged one year. I think typically the courts will look at what the threshold is, but right now, two years seems to be the max or what seems to probably be unreasonable in that sense. We can do further research in terms of what the actual, what has been upheld per se, um, but typically less than two years is not going to be something you're going to see a challenge from. And, and what we're really talking about is like somebody is running for the council right. or they want to run for the council. They haven't been here for two years and they're actually going to pay for some legal procedure to try to fight this right and so and so we have to like weigh like what is the likelihood of that really that's, okay. that's right. certain as well one year for sure has been there there's there's case law where that has been upheld sure I, and it, it probably makes more sense that somebody would expend those resources on a county seat probably less likely for you know our village um but okay yeah, that's interesting thank it's, you it's just um for your consideration this evening, we want to make sure you're aware. And, and even if we decide, which we, you know, I don't know whether we decide that or not, but if we decide to stick to the two years, ultimately the board has the ability to say, well, thank you, but no, we we're going to go with one year, right? To the council. The, the council? council? Absolutely, yes. Okay. And then the voters could vote up or down? Absolutely. Okay. In all scenarios, yes. All right, any other maybe, um, maybe just make a note so whoever's presenting the information at that time to the council is their recommendation if it remains two years two years but also discuss with one year but i think you want to discuss that a little bit more are we, are we good with two years <coughs> or um, wait until then Correct. If that's the, I think I was on the prevailing side. I say I have no interest in bringing it back, but I'll entertain it if somebody else does. I'm sorry. One other quick question: What is? And I think you've already answered. One year. That's the common. Yes, and that has that has.
been upheld in terms of case law, like a one year residency requirement is the typical two years is where there has been a challenge. We have not found anything that was on point for this particular fact pattern per se, or you know, municipalities of this size, but you should be aware of it is what um, we want you to make clear. Um, anybody, any further discussion on the one year, two year? I know we had voted for two. Um, otherwise, we'll move forward with the two. And, um, and also, uh, Francine's comments about the uh, clarifying the language here. I, I agree okay. with her that uh, we need some, you know, the two years, some reference to two years prior to the election. So, right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you'll we'll work on making sure that language gets in there. Got it. And so we'll have, we'll make that change for the next meeting and when you see this resolution. So, I mean, uh, we're going to uh, uh, counsel when, when, when we get down to the charter resolution presentation to review, you, you're going to walk I'll us walk through, through this it. document. Yes, okay. I'll walk through the document. <clears throat> All right. So unless there's any other qualifications input, um, why don't we move on to growth management presentation by the planning and zoning director. Just Mr. Chairman, I wanna make sure you saw the additional information that was provided by legal. It was mainly from other charters on forfeiture and filing of vacancy. I believe that's part of the qualification discussion. Um, if, 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 if you want to bring it up and if you feel like there's something in there that is significant on the on the issue of qualifications. I haven't read it all. Bring it up from discussion. <laughs> I'm just mentioning that it's here. Yeah, I had looked at it and nothing jumped out at me to say, well, we need this in our charter. So I don't have any discussion items uh, on, that, on that topic. I, I, I agree, yes. Mr. Chairman, but I, ju I just wanted to point, I don't know if uh, you guys saw, but Isabelli sent us some uh, a couple of documents, and I think that they were very helpful in terms of some questions, concerns uh, some of us had with uh, the enforcement of the election uh, qualifications, and particularly this one from November 11th, uh, or I'm sorry, November 10th, 2011, uh, from the Secretary of State at the time, which basically spells it out very clearly that um, the person who's administering the election, dealing with the documents, their job is to just approve the documents. They're, it's not up to them to decide validity or whether somebody is uh, a viable candidate or not. And it's up to somebody to make a challenge and for a judge to, to rule on it. So I, I just wanted to, I don't know if we were going to address that or not, but I think that this uh, very clearly, um, I'm ho hoping legal can back this up, that this is the current, because again, this is from 2011, so I don't know if anything has changed since then, but this, this seems to pretty clearly answer the questions we had at the last meeting, so. All right, ready for our presentation. Mr. Chair, good afternoon. Uh, good evening, Claudia Husband, Planning and Zoning and Resiliency Director for Miami Shores. Um, the presentation that you have in front of you tonight is um, my uh, reflection based on your comments from last meeting in terms of growth management. Uh, please, next slide. So based on that, I wanted to give you the regulatory framework that the village currently has and in terms of how that is reflected in terms of growth management. So the first level of um, protection or regulatory framework, it is from the state. The state statute actually defines in chapter 163 all the requirements, regulations uh, that they are in terms of growth management and land use. So from that, one of the requirement is that every municipality adopts a comprehensive plan. And that comprehensive plan, as you might know, for the last year uh, process and projects that we have gone through, it's broken down into chapters or elements, and each element is defined into goals, 
policies and objectives depending on the element that we are discussing. So the project that we have gone through last year only touches into one of the elements, which is the future land use and the future land use map. Um, so we have another 11 chapters to go through during our evaluation and appraisal report process. Um, so with that, after we have that in place, our comprehensive plan, we go and implement those policies, objectives into what is called the zoning code. And in the zoning code basically is how we implement with requirements, with restrictions or allowances, depending on what would we wanna implement those um, policies. Um, and some of the um, requirements or restrictions that you described last time, it was in terms of height, height limitation, height restrictions, floor area ratio, which is basically the size of a structure of a building, and then the density, which is how many units they can be in a place. Next slide. To provide you with some um, um, idea, for example, this is the future land use goal that we have currently in our um, a comprehensive plan in the future land use element. It is to ensure the balance. And whenever you see underlined uh, wording is what we include into this proposal that we currently have under first reading. Um, and what is stricken down is what is being removed. So we have ensures that the balance character and location of the future land uses provides for the highest possible long-term economic and quality of life benefits while preserving and restoring natural resources, strengthening and enhancing overall community character, including the village residential neighborhoods and providing appropriate levels of public services to meet the needs of the village present and future population. So as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, this doc document is broken down into goals, policy, and objective. This is the goal. So this is the overarching, uh, overarching uh, umbrella kind of goal language that it will cover every single land use, not one specific use. So we have um, a series of land uses such as parks, recreations, multifamily. Uh, now we introduce uh, mixed use, so we better code it for what it used to be called multi-use, now it's called mixed use. So that is encroaching every, it is including everything. So it's not just one goal for one specific land use, it's for the overarching um, land uses that we currently have. Next slide. Um, so just to go specific because of uh, the nature of the discussion was in the language that we currently are presented for the single family residential land use. Um, I don't know if it is very clear in your slide, um, but I just wanted to make sure, for example, that you are able to see the differentiation to the left in yellow. It is approximately one acre of land that is depicted on yellow. You can see six lots that they are being highlighted. Those six lots is approximately one acre of land. And you can see how the bottom lots are larger and the upper lots are smaller. That acre of land is depicting six dwelling units per acre. But if we have subdivided the bottom uh, lots, you can have an eight dwelling units per acre. So the density that is being proposed in the single family home to make every single lot in the village that is currently built, it is the existing building environment, we propose 2.5 dwelling units per acre up to a maximum of nine dwelling units per acre. So we'll encompass all the existing land uses. And we further that protection into say that the larger lots that you have in the, mod in the bottom, they cannot be subdivided, something that currently today, because this is just for reading, it can happen. So if the lots in the bottom, they want to come in and be subdivided, they can do that. Um, so what we included in the proposed language is that it's a protective language that bigger lots, they cannot be split, subdivided, um, or make it smaller for <clears throat> more houses to come into the village in the single family home neighborhoods. If you have any questions, please be. I, I have a question, just that, that's a, a interesting. So the, the, the picture on the left that's showing the yellow one, two, three, four, five, six, there's, there's six. Uh, Highlighted dwellings. parcels, yes. Yeah. 
So you're saying the change would, would go from what to what on that little, that little, that, that's one acre, is that what you're saying? That is approximately okay. one acre. One acre, and so it yes. would go from, what is it, what is it now for that acre? Right now you have 2.5, that is the maximum density. Making and, all and the density four. Density meaning, when you say density for this example, means that, that number of, of single family homes? So two, it would be 2.5, although right now there's six? Correct. So okay. that shows the non-conformities that we currently have. Okay, and then you would move 2.5 to between 2.5 and, and 9 units? 9 will be the maximum. So if, we, if it changes then, well, those two lower lots you were saying, they would be precluded from dividing their property based on another provision? Based on the language that you see on the bottom, okay. that it says that not platted lots shall be reduced in size from that currently platted. This shall not limit the right to build on an existing plotted lot, nor does it prevent the combination of a smaller lot to make it larger ones. So in the case that the upper lots, they decided to combine, we can do that, but the bottom lots, they won't be able to subdivide. Okay. And if we have a... You cannot subdivide the smaller one, but right now into the zoning in the implementation document, right now the minimum requirements are 75 feet wide and 7,500. So the bottom lots are, um, are more than, um, if I'm not mistaken, there are lots more than 15,000 that they can be subdivided. So technically today regulations, they could be subdivided. And even if you didn't subdivide them, it seems that here you're depicting eight units per acre. If one of those larger lots, even they didn't subdivide them, wanted to build a two unit property, they could. Or does it have to remain single family? It has to remain single family. Thank you for clarifying. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the, um, Comprehensive plan, that is the language that we have included in today's first reading ordinance um, uh, for the comprehensive plan. Next slide, please. Since it was also a discussion about multifamily, um, I also wanted to give you an overview of what the multifamily and how that is different for the single family areas. So currently you have, um, multiple areas with multifamilies um, along 105 Street, uh, north of Publix, uh, north of the uh, shopping centers in Biscayne Boulevard by, um, by where the dollar stores are located around those areas and also around um, the rail tracks uh, to the west. Uh, so currently the density uh, for multifamily it is up to six dwelling units. So none of the multifamily except for some duplexes, um, and not even that, so I'm sorry to say that, none of the multifamilies are in compliance. So what we incorporated into the multifamily, it was just to reinstate what it was previously in the comprehensive plan, to bring the multifamily land use areas from six dwelling units per acre to 31 dwelling units per acre. Even with that, um, there are some properties that they're going to remain non-conformity, um, but we also added some language that it will be protective for those properties that they can be rebuilt in case of an emergency, in, in case of a, um, um, a destruction or some sort of hurricane. Um, also, you have in here, and Madam Claire has some copies. Uh, this is a document that we prepared for one of our meetings that it is the multifamily typology. Um, if you want to review it at your pleasure, it, show you, it shows you uh, the majority of the multifamily um, current buildings in, in the village with the density that is currently here um, in there with the height of, of the buildings because there are multiple, um, I'm sorry, there are multifamily buildings that they have different heights. They range from one story for the duplexes by the west side and up to what is the highest building, the five story by one of five streets. So you have that document as well that Madam Manager can, can share. Uh, she shared already, I'm sorry. Uh, and you can see it at your leisure with the samples that we have in there.
historical data. Uh, we picked it from what has been in the village and after all our analysis, uh, we couldn't define why the 31 number was used, um, but it was the historical data that, you know, it was incorporated since day one in the comprehensive plan. So we just maintained the language. Thank you. Next slide. <laughs> Sorry. The 31 units What's the designation of the land? It has to be, it's not single family, it's, what's the designation of the land? Multifamily. Multifamily. Multifamily, yes. Per acre. The, okay. So not the, mixed use, not multi-use, not. For this density in particular, it is for multifamily only. Okay, so it has to specifically say in the land use or comp, in the plan, multifamily. Correct, and in the map as well, yes. They have to be consistent. So Excuse me. to do, your question. I'm sorry, uh, do you have a, a, a breakdown of how many single family units versus multifamily units we currently have? Yes, and you will see it in the next slide if, oh, if you want, yes. Fantastic, thank yeah. you. Um, so this is the future land use map, and um, you can see the different colors. Um, so to your previous question, um, yes, the multifamily is depicted on orange, so only the orange colors, um, they can receive up to 35 dwelling units per acre currently in the proposed, uh, current proposal. Did you say 35? 31 30. for multifamily, yes. The other ones that they can receive in the proposal up to 35 are the mixed use areas. So 31 for multifamily? Correct. And 35? For mixed uses. For mixed use. Which is which color? Blue? The pink color. Pink. Pink with uh, hashes. So yes. That, that's the Biscayne corridor downtown. Open. Mm. Pink and hashes only? No, with pink and hashes. So it will be um, starting from the northwest. It will be the Berry area. Yes. In pink and hashes. It will be the Second Avenue, the uh, downtown area. And it will be Biscayne Boulevard and 105. Those are the three areas comprised with mixed uses. And those are in today's zoning of, this is the future plan, and today it's the same? Not for the mixed uses. The, mix, the mixed uses are in terms of the comprehensive plan um they were different land uses and some of them they were restricted commercial or general commercial or institutional or multi-use so they came from different land uses okay sure. um I'm learning along the way. So sure, sure. We can come to... back if you have more questions along and, the and, way. Mm -hmm. I just one other question. The, I guess the thought process and the consideration in designating these areas as future as we see here was derived out of, I imagine, the proper impact studies, environmental studies, traffic studies, and other? They were a series of considerations that we took. Um, some of them, for example, was in the historical analysis that it was performed. Uh, these areas, they were designated at some point as, I define multi-use, and that multi-use, and not to make it more complex, but it is an overlay, and an overlay provides for certain cases additional entitlements and during different amendments of the complaint that was remained it, it was kept in the text but it was removed from the map so the policies 
as we read, the goal and the policies remained in the text, but they were removed from the map. Um, so that is one of the areas. And the other one was historical data looking at from that perspective. We also did a current currency analysis, which is basically the analysis for impacts that the statutes require when we make an amendment of land uses. And in land use, case law and or other, which, what prevails, the map or the text? So we're making some corrections, right? So I'm just curious if there were, like in the past, discussion, well, it says text one thing and map the other thing, which would prevail in a potential legal discussion? That nothing changed without a vote, right? So there has to be a historical record of inconsistencies or matching or unmatching, which would prevail. The map, we're going, we're trying to make corrections and I understand we're trying to line everything up. Or does that, we wanna to defer to another? So I think for the purposes of this discussion, cause I, I want to just guide us a little bit further sure, sure. to the tasks of this committee, which is solely for the purposes of the charter. Typically, growth management provisions are not included in charter provisions. And right. they're only usually included when it comes down, not only. If you do see growth management provision, it's going to be related to something height, something of the sort. And so what we did this evening was strictly to bring um, staff included because they're, I think, um, based off of Mr. O'Hara's, um, or it could have been Mr. Velinsky's direction, I can't recall from the minutes, but there was further discussion about growth management, what's available, but prior to you all implementing something in the charter, you wanted information about what was presently available here. And so I just want to streamline the conversation to in terms of the legal, and I'm getting back to what you originally asked is what prevails. Um, in, in this circumstance, the village recognized inconsistencies and there was an application available at the time, stopped because, because there was inconsistencies, they could not move forward. And so those inconsistencies have been corrected. Um, the comp plan amendment has been presented to the public, to the, um, the commission, to the council multiple times at this point who's been approved on first reading and so what's available and in the information that's been provided this evening is what is approved prior to the deo making approvals but nonetheless if you do anticipate that you want to make a change that is going to affect growth management you should try to do it along the lines of what's already been approved by the council. And so what's the purpose of why Claudia is here is just to give you what is currently available, or what are the current standards in the village, what's proposed based off of this comp plan amendment. And then based on that information, you'll take it and you'll determine whether or not you want to make a recommendation to include a charter height limit across the board, but our rec in, or whatever the case may be, and then we'll go back, do some further research, because what I indicated last meeting was that I can't give sure. legal advice until we know exactly what it wants, what you want to do. So based off of what Claudia provides, then you all would give input, if at all you want to do anything in this regard, and then we'll provide you with what the legal ramifications, what are the implications um, based off of your decision after you hear of what's available in the city is what should be um, taking place this evening. Thank you. Yeah. I think that that's, that's helpful. Um, uh, also, I mean, I don't know whether, so basically, Claudia, if I, as I understood your first slide, in terms of this concept of growth management, you have things that, that, that kind of govern the big picture of growth management. Comp plan, which you're talking about now, the second would be your zoning code Correct. can can impact growth, um, height restriction, Correct. floor area ratio, Correct. and density. Yes. And so I guess as we as I understand what you're saying, you know, you know, to to look at the the big picture of growth management, 
it's helpful to see what we have in place for or working on a comp plan or zoning. But from a from a charter perspective, you know what 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 is put into a charter to impact growth management. I mean, it's not I'm just by example. The chart the, we're not going to put in the charter, you know, a a, a a template for a comp plan or anything like that. So how so do you what? impact growth management by use of a charter? That's what we provided last meeting, which was the samples from Mount Dora, the samples from Miami Beach. Those are samples of how a municipality has implemented growth management in their charters. Yeah. And so those were things like height. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. It, it, but those things are very specific to the municipality. Yeah. So even if you saw sample charters, you cannot pull copy and paste language in this regard. This will be something that's specific to you because you don't have the same height limitations as Miami Beach or right. whatever other municipality we may pull from. Even an outdoor sample that was provided to you all that was recommended by, um, I think, Mr. O'Hara, it's not necessarily something that I'm saying we legally endorse as much as I'm saying it's available. I'll do further research to let you know um, at the next meeting, but height, sure. It, it, yeah. But those are typical things you see in your zoning codes or your comp plans, not your charters. But because it was of interest, we brought it forward. Right. Okay. So, as a point of clarification, in terms of height, currently height restrictions for the village are only in the zoning code today. Now, in the first reading uh, of the comprehensive plan, now they are uh, introduced high limitations in three land uses into the three mixed use uh, areas they are being introduced um, but in the comprehensive plan as of today we don't have high limitations for single family homes or we don't have limitations for multifamily in the comprehensive plan we do have them in the zoning code which is typically where you see them um, also a discussion i'm yeah, sorry mr chair from me so my concern is is I, I don't think it's appropriate for us to start trying to do zoning on the charter. It should be broad. It should be overarching. It should be broader than the comp plan, which is why what I was really looking for was some kind of language to maintain the single family homeowner vibe of Miami Shores. I don't know if there's um, you know language that's possible that we could present to the voters um, that would achieve that or, or give them that option. Um, but that's, that's really what I, what I was looking for here. I'm not trying to, to do zoning in the charter uh, for yeah. sure. Uh, the idea is to have like some overall. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, there's nuance to this stuff. My understanding is what's in the comp plan. Uh, you want to go above and beyond that. Now the burden is on the developer or whoever to make their case why it's a good idea, why it's necessary. Once we put it in the comp plan and we, we keep hearing that a lot of this stuff that people are concerned about is gonna get hashed out with zoning. My concern is that there's nuance there where once we're at the zoning point, now the burden is on us to prove why they can't have it. And I think that's a very important uh, distinction. And I would like to give some ammunition if possible to to people making those arguments and saying like, hey, look, it says in their charter right here that this is supposed to be a majority single family homeowner community. And if you're gonna build some building that put that makes it no longer the case, then you know we have reason right here in our charter that says why this is not a good idea, why we can't do it. That's, you know, that was the idea. If I may, through the chair, I think there might be current language in the, in the comp plan amendment that references the protection of single family homes is if you have that available and if not you're... not current single family homes but the future, the future that this right. will be a sure. single family yeah. community and i think that if, if that is the direction if that is the will of this committee that you want language that says this will be a majority single family home community that is a legal issue we will need to research right and bring that back before a vote would be taken forward but if that's the direction and the instruction to this evening no problem we can do the research bring it back we can have a vote next evening and we can amend this draft resolution if necessary oh, okay 
Thank you. Oh, if I need to, yeah, I would move that we re request uh, from the attorney some language dealing with maintaining single family homeowner majority in Miami Shores. Majority is the, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes. So to continue the presentation, um, next slide, um, or I don't know if you want me to stop at this, I just wanted to give you, sure. Next slide, um, it's basically some graphics uh, showing the land use distribution. Next slide. Okay, <laughs> so just, just to answer your question today, um, the single family homes, it is the majority percentage in land use. Currently you have 68%. Um, the village, oh, there we go. So the village is approximately 2.5 square miles of upland. 68% of that is single family home, which is represented in the yellow. Um, approximately 1.2 square miles of that is single family home, which is equal to 760, approximately 760 square miles uh, of land. So the majority stays and remains as died in our comprehensive plan as proposed into 2022. Oh, do we have... Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't think these are the important numbers. Um, 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 do we have population? I'm sorry? Do we have these numbers by population? By population, you mean how many residents? Or units, like actual units? Rather sure. Rather than the, the amount of land? I, I mean, because I, it's, if we're comparing multifamily to single family, doing it by the amount of land that they take up seems kind of silly. Because obviously on a little bit of land, I could fit a lot of, multifamily units, so it's not really giving us an idea what's going on by looking at the land percentages. Um, and, and also you can demonstrate that the land percentage, it's for example, for multifamily, it's not growing. Uh, the multifamily is remaining what I, it was in 2000. I understand, that's what I'm saying, yeah. that you can make an argument that it's not growing, but if you take the current multifamily land and allow twice as many people on it, then you can still come and make the claim that you haven't changed the land percentages, but you've definitely changed something so sure, uh, that, that's, sure. that's why those, I think those are the important numbers that I, I was looking for. I understand. Um, those numbers, as they are, refer they are ref reflected right now in terms of the land use, the percentage of land use, it's not in terms of population. Um, you have those numbers available. They are online. They are in the current package for the comprehensive you don't have plan. Those. Not currently here. I can give you some approximation numbers in terms of population. Sure. Or, or, the, or the, just the units, like how many single family units versus how many multifamily units do we currently have? Uh, for okay. single family homes, it's approximately 3,000, 3,200, something like that in single families. And for multifamily, I think it was like 600. Something. 600 and something, thank you. Yes. That's what I mentioned at one of the last council. I don't thank you. The yes. Exact number. Mm -hmm. 20%. Thank you. Sorry about that. No, so okay. to, okay. yeah, to the next slide then, um, because this is just regarding, you know, the percentage of land usage. Um, next slide is going into a table representing what are the land uses that we have currently in the proposed amendments and the restrictions that we have in place in terms of height, density, and intensity, which is the floor area ratio. So in the, in the new three mixed use land uses, we have max restrictions, um, we have density restrictions, and we have intensity restrictions. So we have basically what is our envelope. Those is the maximums that they can build. Then for the existing and current land uses, the single family home, multifamily, the commercial areas and the government and institutional, we don't have a maximum height in the comprehensive plan. I'm talking comprehensive plan only right now. 
Um, in some of them, we have density. Uh, of course, there is not density in commercial or government because dense, um, uh, residential units are not permitted. They're not allowed. That's why they're not there. Um, and in terms of size for intensity, uh, we have them in the new land use designations. Uh, we don't have an FAR limitation in the single family homes and the multifamily because they're typically included in the zoning code. And that is where you will see next. And uh, we have the maximum FAR or intensities uh, within the uh, residential, I'm sorry, the commercial and the institutional uh, land uses. So in terms of restrictions, uh, single family homes um, and the multifamilies are uh, regulated as typically it is, as best practice it is in terms of density, but the FAR is typically in the zoning code. Next slide. Yes, slide. sure. On the 40 feet height proposed for mixed use downtown, that's the Second Avenue mm -hmm. corridor. Um, is there currently a building that is 40 foot high on here? That was my question last time was that, you know, linear I can visualize it, but height wise, it's like, like what comes close to that 40 foot height that's currently here? The 9999 building um, in Second Avenue, that is approximately 35 um, um, feet. Um, the condo shores on 105, it is approximately 60 feet tall. Um, and those are the ones um, that I was able to, to look at it. No, that, that helps a lot. Okay. Thank you. Can you just define FAR again? I apologize. So. FAR? Floor area ratio is, in simple terms, is the, uh, the square footage, the size of a building. So you have one acre of land. It is equal to 43,560 square feet. So if you have a FAR of one, it means that in that lot, you can build up to 43,000 square feet. So that is the size. Then it comes into other regulations, uh, for example, for block coverage and setbacks and, and all the other good stuff that are used in zoning. Um, next slide. So these are the regulations that are currently are in the zoning code. And in terms of height, you see a plethora of options of heights that are in different zoning codes. Uh, for example, in the art districts, that, which are the residential, the single family homes, you have for residential uses, you have 30 feet. But for other permitted uses, which is the current language, it allows for 40 feet. Um, typically, that happens is when you have, for example, a church in a single family home area that will allow to be higher than a single family home. Um, the other districts, they varied also between 30 feet, um, 40 feet, except for the institutional, which is the S1 district, which the high restriction is equal to the distance of the building from any street line, meaning the further, the further away that you are from the street, the higher that you can go, because the more setback that you provide from that area, the higher that you can go, because it's allowing you to go for the same distance from that building. Um, in the uh, parking, I'm sorry, in the park district, which is the P district, there are not requirements for height. Um, typically, you see at least a limitation on height for parks as well. Um, so those are what is currently in terms of the maximum height in the zoning. In terms of intensity, which is the FAR that we just talked, the single family homes, uh, there is not current FAR. Um, and the opposite, actually what is currently in the zoning code, it is an, it's an incentive actually to create larger homes because we require a minimum cubic area. So that means that if you have a minimum, it's because you want something to be larger. There are not maximums included in the zoning code today. Uh, the only limitations in terms of FAR, they're currently in the multi in the multifamily. So the only uh, district that currently have that limitation is in the multifamily buildings. Um, and with that said, I don't know if you have any questions regarding that. Um, just a reflection that you can see between the, comp the comprehensive plan regulations and the zoning code. I think the, the work is cut out to be in the zoning code because there is a lot of items and regulatory aspects that they can be included in the zoning code that they're not currently here. And that's probably why some of the uh, trends they had been seen in the last years in the village in terms of 
larger single family homes uh, because there are not currently uh, regulations in place for that. Um, so with that said, I'm open to any questions. That is my last slide for the presentation. So thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claudia. No, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate that. Your information. You're welcome. Your presentation. Any more discussion on the growth management uh, aspect? I know uh, we got a motion that passed to bring back uh, certain information uh, as moved by Jesse. Any other discussion on, on the growth management issue? Seeing none, I guess we can uh, now move into the draft charter resolution, which um, takes up and addresses uh, the contents of our prior meetings and the different areas we've discussed. The council, I'll give it over to you to give us your presentation. Sure. Um, so this is a draft re resolution in regards to the format of it largely it's based on um, whatever statutory or county requirements that are required of um, this type of resolution, which is basically calling for an election. Um, so that type of information, it's standard, you don't have to worry about it. Most of this language, um, at this juncture, I would normally be doing what we probably have already done, which is go through it bit by bit. But um, last meeting, we had voted upon the language and kind of vetted some things out, made the recommendations and the changes. Particularly, I know um, we made some amendments to subsection four of the Bill of Rights um, and just, you know, uh, referencing the Dade County Bill of Rights in terms of the remedies. Um, the, all the strike through language that you see is simply the cleanup items. So next meeting, you'll have this resolution, but we're also gonna provide you with a clean copy of the entire charter all together. So that way you'll see, um, you'll see the proposed and then also like the strike through and red line as well. And so all this is just being taken out to clean it up. We made the changes to the references of council member versus councilman, um, <coughs> sorry. and. Um, what I highlighted throughout and you'll will verify for next meeting is I just wanted to just bring forth that we are still reviewing some information in regards to the um, the provisions regarding the um, uh, whether or not the election affiliation and bipartisan um, ballot questions, particularly with the election um, affiliation we the joint campaign literature language that was added at the last minute meeting, we want to just verify in regards to a little bit more in terms of some case law. Um, and so we have circled around the language with amongst some attorneys in our offices just to pull and see if there was anything else that has been done in other municipalities or other you know legal implications that have been raised. So we'll verify by the next meeting. But we just wanted to at least bring that to your attention. The two-year requirement, resident requirement, we brought that to your attention tonight. My understanding, we'll move forward with the two-year. But at least in terms of the um, the campaign issuing of the joint campaign literature together, we'll verify any First Amendment issues that may be um, brought forth in that regard. Um, so there may or may not be changes to la that language by next meeting. But again, we'll determine to you. And then. Um, the only other thing that we wanted to mention to you to you well that was it those were the really the main the main three ones election affiliations nonpartisan elections they tie into together so we'll just verify a few more issues other than that you'll so you'll see as we go through the document um again there's a lot of strike through and of just the statutory type of language throughout and then you'll actually see the you'll see the actual ballot questions beginning on page 11. 
Now the ballot questions themselves, and I and I don't obviously you all have received this this evening, so I don't expect you to provide any um, feedback per se tonight. But um, as you do read through them, um, recognize that we are confined statutorily in terms of the word limit. So um, it's a seventy-five word seventy-five um, word count. So as you're reading through this. Maybe you want to be more clear and more precise as you're talking to the to the electors. Sure, but just keep in mind we are confined so it's written um, precisely as such and for the most part, it's, you know, we do think that it captures not for the most part, we do think it captures what the, um, the amendments are and at this point we it would just be fine tuning verifying that's why this is still in draft form by next meeting you'll see anything further but there, there largely won't be any more changes to the ballot questions itself um but yeah those right now we have a total of let's see nine ballot questions tonight i think we added an additional one um at least in terms of us directing us to review language for the growth management component. If you come back next meeting and like the language, or we say to you, you may not want to do it because of these are the, the legal implications regarding it, you can change your mind. But nonetheless, there could be potentially nine questions, um, 10 questions. But for now, we have a solid nine. Um, and that's that's really our presentation for this evening. This is we're, we're really at the end. Honestly, we have done most of the leg leg work, and now it's a matter of just fine tuning any last minute things. So on, on uh, <clears throat> so you said the, the nine questions. I see that number nine is on page fourteen. What is uh, so section six? Is that then on the next page, page fifteen? That just continues in what the current charter says, where it talks balloting, then notice of election. No, this. Oh, okay. The balloting, notice of election. Focus is going to be on the amendment to self, and pages eleven through. Um, Let's see, 14. And then if you have any changes to that, we'll just make the additional changes to the other. It's a duplicate, but it's statutorily required. Okay, so, so the, the, starting on page 16, where you have number one, two, and then it goes all the way through nine again. That's the language that would actually be on the ballot that would go to, if this goes, okay. And Mr. Yes. Chair, keeping with that thought, if, a voter wanted to drill down and, you know, see beyond the limited language that they have. How do they do that? Where is this available for them? To it's going to be available via, um, you know, the agenda, the, because this resolution is going to be presented to the council. And so it's final form, it's going to be available to the public. And so that would just need to be a, you know, the incumbent be upon, upon the public to take the, you know, read it to read it and then vote in April. Right, but it is available. Though. Yes, always. Thank yes. You. Yes. Also, um, um, we got the uh, this resolution to here in our meeting. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to post this so that the so I'll, residents can can understanding it's a it's a working draft. But uh, it might be helpful for the residents to have access to our working draft. Um, at the moment, so this was just for this evening. For the next meeting, um, you'll have this will be part of the backup as the agenda package. It'll be okay. part of the backup, and then again, it'll be a part of the backup for the January seventeenth meeting for the council meeting. So they'll have okay. multiple opportunities to have the scene. So for the, the meeting on Monday. There'll be a, a, there will a, a be an similar agenda. document, but a little bit further along. Yes. Okay. Um, the only difference is going to be any finalizations in terms of our research, but it won't be much different from what you see tonight. Okay. It won't. There won't be. At least, also, of course, what was um, Ms. Stillman brought up in terms of the clarifying language of the runoff 
um, of not sorry, not the residency, the, requirement. the residency requirement, that language will be cleaned up. You'll get all this back for your next package before Monday. We try to have it out to you actually tomorrow because that will be the time period that we'll have it out to you tomorrow. Tomorrow, Friday. Yeah. <laughs> My days are running together. <laughs> we'll have it out. We'll have it out. Yes, tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> so if, if, just to make sure we're not missing anything, um, one of the comments um, was about how vacancies are dealt with on the board, and that's not something we addressed. We have not. That's a we, point, yes. so I just, we did. We brought up vacancies, and we brought the information to you. I told you all there was two pending vacancies. There was a vacancy that was current. You reviewed the language and you didn't feel the need to make any changes to the vacancy requirement. The process is a different okay. discussion. However, if you'd like, process is usually a policy driven okay. resolution, something of the sort, not necessarily in your charter. Okay. Um, it's sure. what I wanted to clarify. Thank you for that. And that's what I, where I was going. I wanna make sure we didn't miss anything or we, you know. I'm glad you asked that, uh, Ms. Steelman, because we also had discussed, <laughs> sorry, it's all blurry together now, but uh, the prohibitions about, uh, you know, the, the council not meddling with the, the jurisdiction of the village manager. Is that in here or are we Is that, um, I was not sorry. I know we don't have the minutes from last meeting, but I think we'll have to look at the meetings and see what the vote and final vote and reflection of that was. <laughs> If that was a final vote and direction to include that, then we'll make sure that's included um, in it. But we'll need to verify with the minutes for sure with that. And I, I think what it was, we had two sample um, provisions on the prohibition section. And one of them, we, we, didn't, we want this one, but I think there are actually two, two parts to it. So I think um, if you go back to the minutes of, of the, the meeting on prohibition, we did vote on uh, I can't, I mean, I have it in here somewhere. I don't we, like, we like the one from Davey. We like the one from Davey. The one from, from Davey? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what we'll do is yeah. add that one, and so you'll get an updated resolution with that information. Um, oh, there was something I wanted clarification on. Thank you, and that's the purpose of this, right? Because I know sometimes we can get, it's a lot of topics that we cover. For the runoff election, um, I recall there was some discussion between whether or not it needed to only be required when it was three and between third and the fourth person and a lot of back and forth. So um, without the benefit of the minutes, I just wanted to know the clarification at least on whether we're fine with the language as is, which is there will be a runoff when necessary, you know, X, Y, and Z, or whether there was still consideration about the third and fourth place. Did we? land on that I, one I, mr chair if you don't mind I, is thing working anybody hear me yes. okay good um i think where we left off was that we decided that we wanted uh to have the the runoff no matter what okay however when you use the word necessary it, it that gets a little tricky because it's not technically necessary in all situations but we wanted to do it anyway so that we didn't we were basically going to save the council having to pick like a winner and a tie because there are certain search situations where it really the runoff wouldn't be technically necessary we would just have to leave it to the council to decide who the, the winner was okay. because it wasn't going to be the difference between who was getting a two and a four-year term so um i don't know if necessary is the appropriate word but we did decide that we wanted a runoff in all ties situations okay, okay great so I think the language might just be sufficient as is then. We'll add the prohibition on interference. And then um, we might be at our end of our journey, possibly. Through the chair. Unless you tell me something else. Just wanted to confirm that you are correct. According to the draft minutes, the consensus was to direct the village attorneys to uh, use the town of Davy model and then for that language to be brought back to the, to the committee. Great, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so the next meeting we'll have a full resolution and it's final, pretty much it's final form. 
And then if there's any other additional changes, you'll instruct us. Um, the only other outstanding issue would be the growth management language and ensuring that it captures what you all want if it is legally possible to imp be implemented. So um, next meeting might just be a shorter meeting, possibly, depending on how we go. I know, I don't want to jinx us. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. Don't make promises. <laughs> I know. I should know this. I'm an attorney. <laughs> Will we be able to get the, the new draft before the meeting starts? So that's what and, I'm. And it'll be posted so the residents can also get yes, it. Yes, we're hoping to meeting. post it over yeah. there. Well, yeah. that's what I'm asking council. You know, it's, uh, that's you know, right. This is Thursday. Right. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow is Friday, and yeah. then we're back at Monday. So we'll do our very best. But by the end of day tomorrow, you should have a package for it sent out to you. Are we meeting at 5 p.m. on Monday? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And that's our last meeting. It is. And then um, I do. Yeah, you've got to present the package. Right. Yeah. So I, I, will, I will say before um, you all adjourn, um, I would recommend that the board, if possible, the committee, be present at the January 17th meeting. If you can, if not, um, I think it would be helpful to maybe send a representative from the board just to summer. We are going to provide a report, but I always, I think it in these type of situations with charter review committees, it, I think it holds weight when a committee member makes, is a part of the presentation. So it's not just us because ultimately this is your recommendation. So you should be able to Persuade, convict, not persuade, but you know, yeah. stand represent, behind it. Represent, yes, represent. Body of information. I would intend to be at the council meeting. Okay. And then, uh, you know, how it's traditionally presented, you mm -hmm. can give me input on, on that, guidance on, you know, what, what, might, what part might be helpful for me to participate in. Of course. Yeah. Or just honestly, really, just even if it's as simple as standing up on public comment and providing that you know, within your two minutes or three minutes, what, the process. yeah, or what you thought you don't, know, they should really consider. Mr. Chair, I will, I will definitely be there as well. Great. So, yes. I believe the council members would. I will be there as well. Request Great. information from the charter group that they yes. put together. So we are going to, and I want to clarify that too. We we'll, we will put together a package that summarizes. It include the minutes. It include a report. So to say a staff report summarizing your findings. And then it'll attach the resolution. And I, we've already instructed the council at the last meeting that we'll go through each ballot question individually. So there won't be a wholesale vote up or down on this resolution. It will be voted upon as you all voted upon it every single question. May I ask through the chair that the public comments that we received and the questions that we received be reflected so that the board would know what I'll defer to the clerk is that is that possible possible the, just so that they know the input that we got in the, through this process from the public so such language is included in the minutes okay. so once the minutes are appended to the packet they'll, they'll be, be able included. to read that just, as well yeah the first presentation just to be clear is on January 11th not the 17th there's two meetings no no january 11th is the deadline that we would have to present this to the clerk for the agenda it'll be published at that point or i don't know what that day or next day and then january 17th is the actual meeting where the council will consider the resolution so but there's essentially a two-day turnaround for staff once the meeting ends on the 9th my published date for that council meeting is the 11th so, yeah. okay. Are, are our minutes part of the package that goes to the, the council, or is it just part of the public record? It will be. Traditionally, it is part of the packet. I don't know if that last one is a two-day turnaround, if it'll be able to be published at that time, but the remaining minutes will be ready by that time. Okay. So the, what the, the, I guess we're missing the 12th? The 12th the and the 19th, and then today will be included in the packet. Okay. I don't know if the 9th will be included, but sure. I'll make my best effort. Okay. Anything else? Any other uh, issues for discussion? Mr. Scott won't be here on Monday, I believe. Thank you.
Excellent. Well, thank you for, no, no worries, but thank you, Ms. Wilson. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Claudia. Appreciate it. And um, Mr. Chairman. Well, uh, only if you wish. <laughs> Do I do I hear a relax and get some rest? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Clearly passes. <laughs>